These giant barracuda are very common in southern Florida, the Caribbean, and the Bahamas. They get up to about six foot long and they're just master predators. They have an undercut jaw and very sharp teeth. They hang out usually in fairly shallow water. This one's up on top of a boat wreck. Because of their gray color, that when small fish are below them and look upwards, they don't see these barracuda because they look like the sky. So the barracuda just hang out and then are ambush predators when a small fish comes close. The baby barracuda live in the seagrass and shallow water. Sometimes you even see them at nighttime. These are some of the damsel fish. There's really a many, many, many different species of damsel fish. The first ones here are the cocoa damsel fish. The other damsels, sometimes when they're small, are super hard to identify. These bicolored damsel fish, and also called gregors, farm algae on the reef. You can see it right there. It's their little farm and they protect their little patch of algae. So they're very aggressive, even though they're only three inches long. This is the three spot damsel fish. When they're adults, they're green. The yellow tail damsel fish. And then you have lots of chromis, which are also a type of damsel fish. These fish only get two to three inches long. And sometimes you see these chromis by the tens of thousands. They hang out in areas where there's a lot of upwelling water, and that brings floating algae for them to feed on. Here you may have four to five different types of damsel fish and chromis that are all hanging out together in one location. It's really fun to watch because sometimes you get in schools of so many of these, you can barely see your dive partner next to you. This is a sergeant major fish. It's a type of damsel fish. They also call them jail fish and that's because of the bars on their body. Looks like the stripes on a sergeant major who may uh, be working for the Marines or the Army. These fish are extremely common. They're not afraid of people at all. And in some places, like here, we were actually feeding them peas underwater. And literally, hundreds of these sergeant majors will come in to feed on the peas. You see these fish out on the open reef, usually in calm water though. And they're very, very common in the mangrove forest close to shore. These sergeant majors are mixed in with a dozen other type of fish, but they do really well in huge groups. And that's kind of because if you're a predator, a shark or a barracuda that wants to eat one, it gets confusing when there's so many all there at the same time. These are the yellow tail goatfish. This one's being, you know, pretty much circled by a trumpet fish that's hiding in them so it can catch food. These yellow tail goatfish actually feed out on the sand and they have little tubercles that they dig down in the sand and find shrimp and crabs. But when they're resting, you often see these goatfish in huge schools and they're all swimming into the current together. That way they don't, you know, get bothered by the current and they can kind of draft on each other. Spotted goatfish, these are the really beautiful little hamlets. They get about four to five inches long. Some of them, like the indigo hamlet, is bright blue. This one here is called the, the barred hamlet, and then also there's the bright yellow butter hamlet. These hamlets usually live in about mid-range of water, and they hide in the cracks in the coral and the reef. These are the big hogfish here. They get about three feet long, and they have a sloped head. When they're young, they're this mottled pattern. As they get bigger, they turn kind of solid gray. This one's an intermediate size, um, you know, with more of the brown pattern. They feed on all types of small critters on the sandy seafloor. Often when you're out diving and snorkeling, you'll see a great deal of fish species all hanging out together. Here we have parrotfish, angelfish called the rock beauties, all kinds of fish, trunk fish, different small groupers. All of these fish are kind of hanging out together and they kind of do that and feed together because when there's a no large number of fish like this in one spot, if a big predator comes in to try to eat any one of them, it gets kind of confused with so many fish zooming around in so many different directions. So even though they may be eating different foods, they'll hang out together. This is a big black margot. They get about two and a half, three feet long, and it's a type of grunt. 
And the grunts have a sloped head. They're pretty much a big bodied fish, but they have a sloped head, so they're pretty easy to recognize. These market fish often will hang out back in the caves along with the big jacks. They're very, very, very docile when you're a diver and they'll let you get right up close to them. Super, super pretty fish. And they, like I say, they're a grunt, so they have the sloped head, but there's literally dozens of different types of grunts out on the reef here. Some of them are only a couple inches long and this is one of the largest ones. This is a big porgy, which also looks like one of the grunts, and this one's called the jolt head porgy, and they get about two feet long. You can see our underwater still photographer is having a blast hanging out with this big one in midwater at about 30 to 40 feet deep. The fish has absolutely no fear of people. They just look at you and kind of wonder who you are. You can get right in front of them and get beautiful pictures and movies. There's several different types of porgies, and this one is called the knobhead porgy. They live more in the seagrass on the seafloor, so different species will live in different parts of the water column. Some of them up high in the water column, and some of them right down close to the reef. These are the little spot tail porgy. You can see sometimes 20, 30 in one school. These are the big gray chubs. They get about 20 inches long. They normally eat floating algae, but this school of chubs right here is eating the poop of a big grouper. So this big grouper was hiding out in a cage. It's a big black grouper. When it left the cave, it took a poop, and all these chubs came in to feed on the poop. The one thing you learn about out on the coral reefs here in the Bahamas and Florida and Caribbean, nothing goes to waste. This is a sand tile fish. They get about two feet long. They're really, really hard to see because they look like the color of the sand. And then they also have a hole. If you get too close, they go into the hole to get away from you. This is called the soap fish, the greater soap fish. It gets about 15 inches long. This is one of the flounders, a little spotted flounder that gets about six to seven to eight inches long. These fish are really amazing because they can change colors instantly depending on what substrate they're going over. And they're also, when this fish is a baby, it looks just like a normal fish. As it gets older, it turns sideways, flattens out on the seafloor, and one of the eyes moves to the other side of the head. So these flounders don't look anything like normal. There's lots of sharks out in the Caribbean, and guess who follows the sharks around? the big remoras called shark suckers. These fish get about three feet long and they actually have an attachment on their head which is just kind of like a big suction cup and they hold on often to the belly of a shark. This way they get a free ride throughout the ecosystem and they can eat little bits of the leftovers when the shark feeds. These big remoras, these shark suckers, will also try to attach to divers. This one here is trying to attach to our still photographer, and if it got around to the back side, would probably attach and hold on to her wetsuit. This is the blue stripe lizard fish. They hang out on the sandy seafloor. They're about a foot long. When you get close to them, they zoom away. They really think they're camouflaged. So you can normally get within about a foot, and then wowie, they're gone off into the distance. This is the big eagle ray. They're so beautiful. They get about six foot long. You know, they're basically black with the white spots. They hunt for clams and seafood on the seafloor. This is a big southern stingray, and they get about four foot across. These are actually very, very common. You'll see one of the jacks here is kind of drafting on top of the stingray. Now, these stingrays feed on the seafloor. They have electromagnetic receptors on the underside of their nose, and they could find clams and crabs that are underneath the sand. So here's one with the jack following it, and you can see the stingray here is basically using its nose to detect food under the sand. It often will scare up shrimp and crabs and small fish, and then the jack zooms in and grabs them. This is the rough tail stingray. These actually are quite rare, and they get to be about seven foot. So this is a really big stingray. You can see that it's using its electromagnetic sensors on the underside of its nose and finding 
crabs and clams and different critters that live underneath the sand. And then with its nose and its fins, it digs a hole in the sand to find its prey. You often know where these stingrays have been feeding when you go by while you're scuba diving because you'll see a sandy area that has several different craters in it. And you know that's either one of these big, you know, stingrays, one of the southern stingrays, or one of the eagle rays that's been feeding there. This is a little yellow stingray. And by the way, all these stingrays have a poisonous barb on their tail. So it's super important to keep your distance from them. These little yellow stingrays live a lot in the lagoons and shallow harbors and bays, and also out on the reef, but usually where it's calm. They get about a foot and a half long. They're harmless to people as long as you give them your space. You just don't want to step on one of these, or you can get that poisonous barb into you that's extremely painful. Stingrays are dangerous as long as you just let them keep their distance from you. The most common shark in the Caribbean are these 10 foot long Caribbean reef sharks. They are incredibly fun to dive with and they're pretty much harmless towards people. They're fully protected by law, so the Caribbean has a lot of them, along with the Bahamas. The second most common shark are these nurse sharks. These nurse sharks can get all the way up to 14 feet long. What's unusual about these nurse sharks is that they can lay calmly on the seafloor and rest without moving, and they can pump water through their gills. Where the Caribbean reef sharks have to continually swim daytime, nighttime, and even when they're sleeping to run water through their gills. If you look close at the head of this nurse shark, you see all these little black dots. Each one of those dots are electromagnetic sensors that can detect animals that are around them, including divers. You get anywhere near these sharks, they know who you are and right where you are at. They use these sensors to find their food, this one here is just relaxing and cruising over the top of the reef. They're really, really beautiful sharks. There's no worry about diving with these sharks. You just don't want to get around them when they're actively feeding because these sharks, the nurse sharks, have a type teeth that are kind of crushing teeth and their jaws are so strong that they can take a big clam or even a conch shell and crush it, chew it up and eat it. They're super fun to watch underwater. No one's hardly ever been hurt by one of these sharks unless you're trying to grab it or hold on to it or doing something really stupid. These nurse sharks are very common even around in the harbors and inlets. The reef sharks though are way more out on the open reef and the more reef sharks that are on the reef means the reef is healthier. These sharks do not eat live, fast, healthy fish. A lot of people think that they try to chase down fish and then they accidentally may bite a diver or a surfer or a swimmer. These sharks actually, actually use their electromagnetic sensors on their snout to, de to detect wounded fish and sick fish. If we didn't have these sharks out there, the whole beach would be covered with dead fish and marine life. Many places in the Bahamas and Florida and the Caribbean, you can go on shark dives where they actively feed the sharks. It's super safe to do. You just don't want to get right in really close to where they're feeding. But you can sit there and watch how they feed. And once again, if you look close, these sharks are not chasing the live fish. They couldn't catch a live fish if their life depended on it. They're simply too slow. And the live fish know that, so they'll You'll see a big school of fish, these, you know, yellow striped snappers and, you know, horse-eyed jacks and even big groupers that hang out with all of these sharks here. And they're not worried whatsoever about one of these sharks trying to eat them. But if any of those fish get wounded or sick or diseased, within seconds, these reef sharks will gobble them up. That's why it's so important to have these sharks out on the reef in large numbers because they keep the reef clean. This is one of the dive sites where they actually feed the sharks. And at one time we were surrounded by over 60 10 foot long Caribbean reef sharks and five or six nurse sharks along with a couple big grouper. You notice that these sharks, even when they're in a shark feeding frenzy and they're eating their food, 
their electromagnetic sensors and ability to detect body waves underwater makes them incredibly good hunters and incredibly good at getting their food and not the diver's hand. This is actually not the safest thing in the world to do, I have to say, but rarely do these divers that feed the sharks ever get harmed at all by them. These sharks are super, super good about grabbing just exactly their food item. Even when they're going super fast, they can grab something within an inch or a half an inch and be sure of what they're getting a hold of. These are the nurse sharks that feed in some of the harbors. This cute little three inch long fish is called a basslet. There's a lot of different types of basslets, but this one called the fairy basslet is probably the most beautiful. You see these will hang out in small groups, usually back in caves where it's quite dark. And then there are just all kinds of blennies out on the reef. There's about, oh gosh, 50 to 60 different species of these little tiny blennies that are only a couple inch long. This one is called a spiny head blenny and it lives in an old wormhole. There are all kinds of different snappers and grunts out on the reef. Many, many, many different species. But one of the funnest fish to watch are these really, really cool jawfish. Now these fish make a little hole in the sand. They're only about three to four inches long. And they come out of the hole to feed on little bits of algae. They'll come right up to you as a diver. But when you get too close, they zoom back in their little hole. What's interesting about these little jawfish is when the females lay eggs, the males keep the eggs in their mouth until the eggs hatch. That's why they call them jawfish. This is the drum fish. It gets about eight to 10 inches long. Super beautiful, lives back in the cracks. It's got this gigantic dorsal fin that goes straight up in the water column. Super pretty fish. These are the frog fish. You don't see a lot of them in Caribbean and Bahamas, but you do see some. This is the little tobacco fish. These guys here are the little basslets. This is a little harlequin bass. It only gets to be about four inches long and they hang out on top of the sandy seafloor. There are many, many different species of grunts in the Caribbean and Bahamas and Florida. And this one's called the pork fish. It's probably one of the most beautiful grunts. They get about 10 to 12 inches long. You'll often see this fish in big schools or hanging out by themselves. Here's a baby and the babies usually hide out really close to the reef in shallow water. Super, super pretty fish. They hatch out in the calm lagoons, especially in the mangrove forest. Here you can see babies and intermediates all swimming together. One of the nicest fish to watch in all of the Caribbean and Florida and the Bahamas are these beautiful schoolmasters. They call them schoolmasters because they're a master at schooling. When you see these two foot long fish and they're not feeding, they're just resting, they hang out on the reef and they're usually pointed into the current and they all hang out together. What this does is it makes them kind of safe from predators because if a shark or another fish comes by to try to eat them, there's quite a number of these fish together and so they zoom different directions to confuse a the predator. They also don't expend as much energy when they're schooling and swimming into the, into the current. The baby schoolmasters usually live in inland lagoons and waterways and mangrove forests where it's shallow. These are the sailor's choice grunt. They're really, really, really pretty. They get about a foot and a half long. And then you can see some of these schoolmasters and grunts and sailor's choice, when they go in the darkness, they turn different colors. There's lots of different types of grunts that swim together all at the same time. These are the blue stripe grunt, and then the French grunt, and then you have the striped grunts. So all of these fish will kind of hang out in the same Gargonian forest or underneath the coral head, and you'll see them all together. Now the striped grunts here usually like it more back in the darker caves. This is one of the big dog snappers. They get all the way up to about three foot long. And when they're big like this, they usually cruise and hunt by themselves versus a lot of the other grunts and snappers, especially when they're small, hang out in big schools for protection. 
Here's some of the stripe grunts. And then this is an interesting shot here because there's three different types of grunts all hanging out under one rock. Now here you have the Sailor's Choice grunt, you have the Blue Stripe grunt, you have them all hanging out in a Gargonian, and they're swimming against the current, and they're right with a red banded parrotfish. So it's really fun to see these fish because again, they often hang out together, especially when there's a current at a tide change. This is the mahogany snapper. They get about 15 inches long and they're normally cruising around on the open reef pretty much by themselves. And then these are the yellowtail snapper. These snappers get about two foot long and here you see giant schools of them that are hanging out at one of the shark feeding areas and they're eating one of the pieces of dead fish. This is one of the babies of a black fin snapper, but you can see it doesn't have black fins, it's a baby, it has yellow fins. It's often very difficult to identify some of the baby snappers in the grunts because a lot of them look very similar. There are several types of surgeon fish that live in the Caribbean, Bahamas, and Southern Florida, but these blue tangs are probably the most common. They call them surgeon fish because they have a really sharp spike at the base of their tail here that can cut you deeply if you tried to grab one of these. These fish are incredibly important for the coral reef. They're algae eaters and they cruise around in large schools as you can see and they clean the algae off of the corals. This actually gives room for the corals to grow. These types of feeders that feed on algae are incredibly important for the health of the ecosystem because if they weren't there, then the algae would grow, cover the coral, and all the coral would die. My favorite fish in the entire area here are these gigantic tarpon. They look like big silver sharks. They can get to be about eight feet long and they live right very close to shore. A lot of the times they'll come into harbors and intercoastal waterways and live right underneath people's boat docks. These things are so big when they cruise on by, you think they're a shark and they got a pretty big dorsal fin. They have shiny silvery scales. They feed at nighttime on small fish. During the daytime, they just cruise around and act kind of lazy. But at nighttime, if you're out diving with the bright dive lights, that attracts small fish and then these big old tarpon come in and feed right in your dive light on the little fish. This is a really cool long skinny cornet fish. They get about three feet long. This fish is really unusual in the way that it hunts. It has an expandable mouth. It kind of stands on its head and looks into cracks for little fish. When the little fish look up at it, they don't see the long body. They just see the tip of the nose and so it doesn't look like a big threatening fish. When they get close to one of the little fish, they open their mouth which gets about four times the size of the round part of their body and they basically suck in a small fish that they eat whole. These trumpet fish are really cool the way they hide, especially when they're hunting. Like this one here is hiding in a Gargonian and you can see its stripes kind of look like the pattern of the Gargonian. This way the little fish don't see it. These trumpet fish can change colors, they can be yellow, they can be bluish, they can be striped, but they're really good masters of camouflage in order to catch the little fish that they feed on. This blue phase one is super, super pretty, but once again, if you notice, every time you see these fish, they're looking into a crack for food but they're almost kind of standing on their head, so it's really hard for the little fish to see them. There's lots of different types of wrasse that live in the Caribbean and in Florida and Bahamas. The wrasse are also like the parrotfish to when they grow up, they change sexes and they change colors. This one is a yellow head wrasse. Then they have blue head wrasse babies. This yellow head wrasse is carrying a, a shrimp in its mouth. This little wrasse right here is called a slippery dick wrasse. This one's called a clown wrasse. Often these fish are very hard to identify. This is a school of creole wrasse. 
You notice that they're blue, but when they get older, the males turn into these vivid yellow and orange colors along with the blue. This wrasse is called a pudding wife wrasse. Most all of these wrasse, though, they change their sex and they change their colors as they grow older. This one's feeding with the yellow stingray. This fish is called a yellow fin majara and they live out on the sand. And we also find seahorses from time to time. They live in the shallow water lagoons and inner waterways and hold on to the grass, feed on little shrimp. This fish is called a sheephead porgy and they get about three feet long. One of the neatest things when you're scuba diving is get into a school of hundreds of these big schnook. These schnook grow to be about five feet long and they live pretty much in shallow water along the coastline. They often inhabit the inlets and bays. When I was diving with these fish, there were probably 300 at one time. These are the catfish that live in the inland waterways. They eat about anything that they can find on the seafloor. And then a little drum fish that's hanging out with an arrow crab.